Hi, I'm Greg Solgit, and this is Nicholas Powell, and we're here today to explain the Monty Hall problem. Now, there are plenty of videos online which explain this problem, but we're going to do it in a way which does not rely on statistics. So if you don't like maths, you've come to the right place. Uh, instead, we're going to show you a way in which you can understand this intuitively. Now, what is the Monty Hall problem? There's a host named Monty Hall who takes a contestant, Nicholas in this case, and presents them with three doors. Behind two of the doors are booby prizes, goats. Behind the third door is a brand new car. That's the prize. How this works is that the three doors are set up for the contestant, and the contestant gets to choose one. Go ahead, Nick. OK, I'm going to choose this one. OK, now the host turns one of the other doors around, revealing one of the booby prizes. The contestant is given the option of sticking with the original door he chose or switching. Which do you want to do, Nick? Well, I don't see how switching could make any difference, so I'm going to stick with my choice. Right. And that's what many people do. And it's hard to see why switching should make a difference, unless we go through this exercise here. Instead of using three cards, we're going to use ten cards, and we're actually going to show it from the host's point of view so that you can see what's going on essentially backstage. And by doing so, it should make this much more obvious. Now, I'm going to choose this one. And notice what's happening here. There's a very small chance, from my point of view, that I'm going to pick the car. In fact, there's a 1 in 10 chance that I'm going to get it, which means there's a very large chance that the car is somewhere else. In fact, a 9 in 10 chance. So the rules are, Nick, you have to reveal to me all of the other doors, leaving only two standing, OK? And one of them has to be the car. So go ahead. So notice what's happening. There's a 9 in 10 chance the car is anywhere else. And in essence, Nick has to reveal to me where it is, right here. So there's my prize. Does that seem fair? No. No, it's not. It's not fair at all. How can we make it fair for the host? Well, maybe if, if I had to choose all the cards at random and I didn't know where the car was, then, uh, and then there'd be a chance that I could take the car away without. Precisely. So if we take these and shuffle them up and place them face down so that neither the contestant nor the host get to know where it is, now it would be a fair game. So I'm going to pick this one, and you overturn randomly eight cards. And chances are the car went away with it somewhere, and that neither one of these, indeed, is the prize. But you're not faced with that option. The game is definitely rigged against the host. Now, let's try the game again with only five cards to hammer the point home a little more. OK, I'm going to choose this one. Same rules apply. Go ahead. Notice this time there's a smaller chance, there's a one in five chance that I would hit the car on the first try. That still leaves a four in five chance that it's anywhere else. And if it's anywhere else, the host has had to point it out to me. And there it is. The same thing now, this is where the rubber meets the road. Let's bring it down to the original case, to three cards. Now, what are the odds, Nick, that I'm going to hit the car on the first try? Uh, there are three cards, so one in three. One in three, exactly. Which means there's a two in three chance that it's anywhere else. And if it's anywhere else, you've got to show it to me by revealing the one that it isn't. And Notice I go from a 1 in 3 to a 2 in 3 chance, effectively doubling my chances if I switch. I'm going to switch. How'd I do? You won. Brilliant! I'm just loaded with cars. OK. So hopefully that makes a little more sense than if we just started with three cards and explained it statistically. We used cards in keyboards so that you can do this at home if somebody asks you about this problem. You should have cards lying around and probably a keyboard somewhere. You can use regular playing cards. We suggest using a face card as the prize, 
and four other cards as the booby prizes. And with five cards, you can play the game the same way that you saw us do it, and then narrow it down to three. If they still don't believe you, play the game empirically. Set out three cards, put a hundred pennies off to the side, and pick a card and then always switch. Each time you get the car, you get a penny. Each time the host wins, they get a penny. By the end, you'll find out that you have twice as many pennies as they do. And hopefully that will convince them. I'm Greg Salgut. I'm Nick Powell. And thanks for watching.